Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Welcome to Bible Learning Corner. We thank you for joining us uh, once again in the ongoing discussion, being hearers and doers of the Word of God, being hearers and doers of God's Word. We have already had some a discussion talking about being not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word of God. We're going to talk about uh, mankind, how mankind was designed to conform to the word of God. And before we get into several religious scriptures in the Bible to understand how man was designed to be compatible with the Word of God, we must appreciate the fact that man was made in the image of God and his likeness. This is according to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Verse 27. Man created in the image of God. This is something to do with the spiritual image. I note the natural image as in the natural or in a physical mirror. And this spiritual image is to do with man conforming to the Word of God, which is a mirror. The Word of God is a mirror according to the book of James, chapter 1. As we have already talked about James, chapter 1, verses 20 to 25, James explains what it means, someone becoming a hearer and a doer of the Word of God. As James explains in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 20 to 25, man needs to be not only a hearer, but a doer of the Word of God. Man must therefore be a hearer and a doer of God's Word. God's commands, God's commandments, God's instructions, God's law. We have already had topical discussions sharing uh, several messages uh, talking about understanding the uh, supernatural and also topical discussions uh, talking about mankind having been designed not only in the flesh, in the natural, but he was created in the spirit and he needs to understand things beyond the natural. Therefore, man having been created in the image of God and his likeness. We have had this uh, discussion you can go to Bible Learners Ministries' main website and see the uh, teachings, the resources that have been published on the Bible study section. There are also messages already shared on our YouTube channel, and more are coming up soon. You need to subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. Man, having been created in the image of God, man being made or created in the image of God and his likeness, also their messages shared on the Bible Learner's Sekona radio podcast talking about what it means man being made or created in the image of God and his likeness. From the beginning of time, 
we see mankind, humanity, having been created perfect and without sin. Therefore, from the beginning of time and before the fall of the first mankind, the first Adam, mankind was created. He was formed from the dust of the ground. God formed mankind from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils, and mankind became a living soul. Therefore, Mankind, having been created in God's image and his likeness, he was given instructions, he was given a command. Mankind was told that they should not eat from the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but the woman, Eve, having listened to the serpent, who told her that God knew that on the day they would eat fruit from that forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would be like God, knowing good and evil. Mankind, having been deceived, the woman, Believing what she heard from Satan speaking through the serpent, she ate fruit from that forbidden tree. She also gave that fruit to her husband, Adam, who listened to the woman and accepted to eat that fruit. And when they ate, both of them became naked. Therefore, as we get to understand that mankind was in sin as they had but disobeyed God's instruction. Therefore, all humanity fell short of the glory of God and all humanity became dead as God had instructed according to God's law. Well, we got a question from uh, someone that uh, was asking how man was created in the image of God and his likeness, and uh, mankind, how mankind was made in the image of God. What does this mean? As we have already mentioned, man was created in God's image, and the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and also in the book of Psalm 139, talking about mankind having been created in a very unique way. In the book of Psalm, David writes, according to chapter 139, verses 13 and 14, David says, For it was you, who created my inward parts, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Mankind, therefore, was created perfect. He was fearfully and wonderfully made. How is this? He was made to have communion with God, mankind was created to have a relationship, to have a spiritual union with God, his maker, and mankind was created to have fellowship with God, the creator of all things. Man was therefore designed with a free will. As we have already said, talking about the free will of mankind, mankind having been given a free will, they decided not to obey God's instruction, God's command, 
not to eat fruit from the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Therefore, we see man falling into sin. But man, although he fell into sin, God wanted to restore man back to what he wanted him to be. That is why we need to understand the Lord Jesus Christ coming to save mankind in this world. Jesus Christ, the word of God that came into the natural, from the spiritual into the natural, to dwell amongst the humanity so that mankind would hear God speaking through his, his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whoever that would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We need to read through several scriptures and with the guiding of the Holy Spirit, someone should be able to understand what they are reading. The Bible has got special messages to give mankind enlightening so that man may understand how God loves mankind. God loves humanity. And because of his love, that is why he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the word that came from heaven to save humanity, to save the souls of mankind, the souls that were dead through the first Adam's disobedience. Therefore, man was designed with free will to choose to listen to hear God's voice, to agree with God, or obey God's voice, to walk with God, and according to God's word, and willing to be led by and the guiding of his spirit, the Holy Spirit. This is the spiritual walk with God. God having created mankind, although mankind lives in the flesh, they need to live and walk according to the spirits. And that is why we need to have a spiritual walk, a spiritual walk with God, walking a spiritual walk with God simply means living according to God's word and being led by the Holy Spirit. Being a hearer of God's word and a doer of the word of God. Therefore we need to believe by faith. As we hear the word of God, we need the guiding of the Holy Spirit to help us to understand what we are hearing. Obedience to God's word and instructions. This is what someone needs to do when someone hears the word of God. They need to obey, to trust and obey and follow the instructions, to follow God's word, to follow God's command, to follow God's law. Therefore, Obedience to God's word and instructions or God's laws or God's commands, God's commandments was the only requirement that man was to meet, to be a hearer and a doer of the word of God. But as we learn from the Holy Scriptures that in the beginning, the first Adam, the first mankind, in God's creation, disobeyed God's commands, he disobeyed God's law, and became dead in sin. He became dead, but through the salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ has provided for humanity, mankind has been redeemed from the curse of sin and death. 
Therefore, as people trust and believe in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done, they become back to what God wanted mankind to be. Therefore, mankind becomes born again. You need to understand what it means someone becoming born again. That is, one has to hear the voice of God, the word of God, and as they believe and obey and do what God has commanded, they become believers, hearers, and doers of the word of God. But as we learn from the Holy Scriptures that say in the beginning of time, the first mankind, the first Adam, having disobeyed God's command or law, we also need to know that if people do not believe in what the Lord Jesus Christ has already provided for us, we remain condemned. Jesus did not come into this world to judge the world, but to save the world. Now, we understand how things work in the natural world, where mankind has made their own laws and regulations that must be followed and adhered to. Any person that breaks or contravenes any of these laws that have been given put in place by the governments or people in authority, anyone can be taken to court and they face judgment. And if someone is found guilty, they'll face their consequences. Everyone knows this to be true and therefore they hear and they obey to avoid facing judgments. Most people, if not all, always seek to avoid being brought before the law courts or before a judge for fear of condemnation by observing the laid down rules or laws or regulations people are kept safe and in case one is falsely accused and they are taken to court they appear before a just judge they will be found not guilty and therefore they will not be condemned God, too, has his laws. God has his instructions. He has his rules. He has his commands and has given to mankind his word, which is his just law. And anyone who does not follow the word of God, who does not trust, obey, or believe in the word of God, one day, they are going to be judged by the same word they have neglected, the same word that they have rejected. They have heard the word but have rejected. There will be a day in the near future when all humanity, when all mankind that has lived in this life, that have come in the natural and have existed they will appear before the lord our god and they will face judgment every person will then be questioned they'll be weighed just like on a weighing scale they will be laid on god's just scale which is god's word and they will go through judgment, whether good or bad. And if someone is found blameless, they will then receive their reward for eternal life with God in heaven. And if found guilty, someone shall be given their reward for eternal condemnation 
eternal separation from the Lord and they will be cast into that place where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is real. The time for each one of us to put our house in order is now. We need to repent now to be hearers and doers of the word of God. Let us therefore receive the gospel message of truth, to accept the truth to be set free, to believe and receive the free gift of salvation that has been given to us by God through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Through his obedience, Jesus Christ accepted to become sin, so that all humanity who are dead in sin may be redeemed from the curse of sin and death. Therefore, every person that believes in Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection, trusting in his word, they will be saved. Let's therefore receive the gospel message of truth, believe and receive the free gift of salvation in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the last Adam. Through his obedience, God has granted mankind the last chance to go back to him. Whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and by surrendering our life to him, we will be saved and not face condemnation. God instructed the first Adam, the first mankind, not to eat fruit from the forbidden tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but the first mankind, the first Adam, disobeyed this God's command. And as we have already talked about this mankind, according to God's word, as he said, that on the day they shall eat fruit from that forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they shall surely die. And indeed, mankind died. The spiritually, mankind died, was separated from God. Let no one be deceived as the first mankind, the first Adam, was deceived. And he went against God's important instruction. The first Adam's disobedience led to all mankind falling into condemnation, leading to the curse of uh, sin and death, the curse of sin and death that came upon all mankind. But mankind has now been given a second and last chance. There is redemption and restoration through salvation that is only available in Christ Jesus the last Adam. As Jesus said, and unless a person is born again, they cannot have eternal life. Eternal life is in the Son of Man, the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ, who was sent into this life, he was lifted up on the tree. The Lord Jesus Christ was lifted up on the tree on the cross at Calvary. He died to save the lost souls. And unless someone looks unto the Son of Man on the tree and believes in him, his death, his burial, and resurrection, becoming born again, becoming baptized in Christ Jesus, becoming united in Christ Jesus, becoming one in Christ Jesus, becoming the image of Christ Jesus, they will remain condemned. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life, eternal life, abundant life, everlasting life that is in the kingdom of God in heaven. Please read through the book of John chapter 3, talking about Jesus 
teaching the man Nicodemus. We will be back shortly to continue talking about being hearers and doers of the word of God. We ask you to listen to the messages that we have already shared and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to give you wisdom, knowledge and understanding to be able to see real pictures within the scriptures you are reading. Stay blessed and shalom.